Then it goes into the washer. Some shops use a hot tank with very caustic chemicals. This shop uses a big steamer, which is like a giant dishwasher. It cleans all the grease and grime out of the motor. What you see here is the crankshaft on the crank grinder. Now you don't really machine crankshafts, you grind them. There's an old saying that rings really true. You machine to tolerance and you grind to perfection. So anytime you see bearing journals, they're usually ground, not machined. Now the block's on the boring machine. This is rough cutting the cylinders to the next size up, probably 30 thousandths oversize. They usually go 30, 40, 50, and 60. It's rare that you see 10 and 20 over anymore. You can see it cut as it goes on down. It's just roughing it out. What's cool about this, this is all automated. The machine knows where it's at. It drops down and self-centers itself. Once it finds its true center, it starts up and starts cutting all by itself. Pretty cool, huh? And it repeats this process on all eight cylinders. Now the honing machine's getting set up. Now remember earlier I said you machine to tolerance and grind to perfection. Honing is a form of grinding because you're using stones. This is putting the actual finish on the cylinders. Honing puts a cross-hatching finish on the cylinders. When honing the bores, you have to put the proper finish on to the type of rings you're using. Otherwise they may not seat and you're gonna have a lot of problems down the road. Most performance rings, such as Molly or Iron Duckdaw rings, tend to use a smoother finish. This finish is determined by which stones are used in the honing machine. The liquid that you see there is just coolant. It just keeps the bits clean and keeps them cool. Now he checks the size, make sure he's getting to where he wants to be. Now, for performance engines, if you notice, this block has torque plates put on it. What a torque plate does is while you're doing the honing process, it mimics having the head torqued on. So it's stressing the block just as if a head was, was bolted into place. That actually makes the cylinders truly round when the heads are bolted on. You'd be surprised at how much a cast iron block moves. On performance engines, there can be a 30 to 40 horsepower difference between the machining processes of going with a stock machining process or doing a performance process where you use torque plates and putting the proper finish on the cylinders. This machine here is surfacing the deck surfaces of the block, making sure they're flat and taking out any imperfections. Now the block goes into what's called an align honing machine. What this does is make sure all the crankshaft journals are exactly in line and the correct size for the bearings. It's basically like a big long hone. If you look real close, you'll also notice there's a piece of an oil pump bolted into place. That way it mimics having an oil pump bolted on so it stresses the cap exactly the way it's gonna be when it's in the engine. Now if you notice, this block still has the torque plates put on. This is the performance engine. Now he's checking the size to make sure all the journals are correct in size. Now the rods go on a machine and they also get sized. And again, this is a honing type of process. and then they check them to make sure the size is within spec.
And once that's done, we're going to put the wrist pins on the pistons. So the rod goes in an oven to heat up the small end. That expands it so the wrist pin of the piston can be pushed through. That locks it in place. Now the heads go through the disassembly process. All of the keepers and retainers are taken off and then the springs are removed. Now he's pulling out the valves, taking off the seals, 